One of my favorite features with SwiftUI has to be the SwiftUI Charts framework. And it's not just because I'm a data nerd, but that is definitely part of it. SwiftUI Charts is just so easy to use once you wrap your head around it. It did admittedly take me a little bit of time to figure out how to design interesting looking charts. So today I wanted to take a few minutes and just show you how I'm using SwiftUI charts in my upcoming weather app, Weather Number, and specifically how I built this chart here, which takes the weather numbers for the next 12 hours and displays them to the user in this, at least I think, pretty way. And without any more rambling and talking, let's get into Xcode. Here we are in Xcode. We're gonna just create a version of that chart and SwiftUI just so you can see how easy this is. Feel free to extend this however you want into any project that you want to make on your own. The first thing we need to do is create some dummy data because we're not going to bother with the whole weather fetching and stuff like that. So let me just paste in a couple of things and then I will explain those to you. All right, so we have our data model right here, which is hourly data. And then we have a view model, which we're gonna have a published variable that is an array of our hourly data. And then we just, uh, on initialization, we just generate this dummy data to fill it so that we have something to plot. This is just hard coded here. And then we have an array here, which we then append uh, for each hour in uh, zero to this mini. So we have 12. We're gonna add an hour to our current date so that each one of these values gets an, a different hour assigned to it. And then we have basically our data set that we can plot. That's not really the point of the video though. What, what we're really here to see is how to make charts. So the uh, first thing we need to do actually is assign our view models. So we're gonna create a state object here, view model, and we're gonna assign it to the view model we created up here. So that way we have access to our data. And then we can say view model dot hourly stats and we're gonna do uh, hourly stats in. And then inside here is where we kind of design our chart. We're gonna use a line mark uh, with an X and a Y. We're gonna have a dot value. Every value has a label and a value assigned to it. So we'll have this be date and then uh, we'll have hourly stats dot date. And then for the Y, we'll have dot value and this will be a weather number, and we'll have it be hourly stats dot weather number. And now if I run this, we should see a very generic looking chart once it's loaded. So very generic, nothing pretty yet. Uh, while we're at it, I'm gonna just copy this, put down here, and then we will do a point mark. So this will add a point for each data point we have. We'll be able to pretty up individually from the line mark. So now we're gonna get into a little bit of beautification. First, I'm just gonna make the code here a little bit easier to follow so that uh, if you have any, if you're following along, it might be easier for you to see here. Let's focus on the line mark first. I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna make the line thicker and I'm gonna make the line um, kind of curve as it goes from point to point rather than have it be these sharp uh, changes. The first thing is we're gonna do a line line style, which is a stroke style, and we're doing seven here for a line width, thicken up that line. And then we're also gonna do uh, something called uh, interpolation method, and we're gonna use this cat mulrom, which kind of curves out all the lines. You can affect this with an alpha variable, and you can just change how much of a curve it has. Uh, so I'll just leave it like this. One thing that I did in my app was as it transitions from one point to another, I create a gradient between those points based on the color associated with the weather number. So if you're, you're at like a higher end weather number, like a nine or a 10, maybe that's green, and then like a one or a two might be red, and in the middle is yellow. But I wanted, as you move from one to the next, for the line mark to change color because the point marks are also those colors. So I, I thought that kind of looked Pretty cool and the way I came up with doing that um, was to create a couple of different things here so the first thing I did was inside of our chart I create a gradient which is going to take our, our view model and basically uh, create a gradient from the point right from one point to another now weather card color takes in this uh, double which is going to be the weather number and it assigns a color based on the value of that number so we have custom colors here, which I'll show you in a second how I created those, but we have a red card, a yellow card, 
green card. And uh, if it is a 10, which would be kind of the only other number in this situation, uh, we have a perfect card. And now with this gradient defined, all I need to do is basically assign it to the foreground style. And now as it transitions from point to point, it changes the color of the line. I think we're basically done with the line for now. Let's work on the point marks because what we want is the points to be a little bit bigger. We want them to display the values of the uh, actual point so that it's easier for users to interpret. Uh, and then we're gonna shrink the chart down to size just to make it fit on the screen a little better. Uh, let me just show you really quickly. If you ever wanna create custom colors, you just go into your asset folder and then you just uh, can right click and do a new color set. And then you just assign whatever color you want for that. And then you can just use red card, perfect card, whatever you want in your app as dot notation type of thing. The next thing we really need to do is make the point marks more legible. So we're gonna make them bigger. We're gonna put the number for the value inside of them. And then we're gonna kind of uh, make the chart a little bit better fit for the screen. We changed our color. Uh, we wanna do um, symbol size. Let's do like 300, maybe even bigger. Let's do 500. So that makes our point bigger. Um, I also had the uh, point marks kind of have a shadow so they kind of jump out the screen a little bit. So we'll give them that little shadow you can see. Just makes a little bit of a 3D effect. Nothing too dramatic, um, pretty subtle, but I, I think it does help uh, add a little bit of life to the chart. Okay, now let's annotate our chart. Uh, we're just gonna add dot annotation and then we're gonna fill it out with this text uh, here. I'm adding a percent zero, percent, percent dot zero F here, which will remove the floating point. If you wanna have a decimal point, you would just do something like this. Uh, my values actually don't even have one, so technically I don't even need it, but in my app, I actually do have those there. So this is all just styling. Um, I did need to do an offset here. If I don't have the offset, you can see what happens is the uh, numbers will appear above the point marks. And then I also used uh, a frame, which does kind of change things a little bit. It, it really, you know, is up to you how, how you fit everything into your app. I also um, changed the kerning. This isn't really that necessary for uh, single numbers, but when I had uh, the decimal point here, if you don't have the kerning, you can see the numbers will be further apart and they don't fit as nicely in the point marks. So I just shrunk them down a little bit to fit them better inside the point marks. And I even have uh, in my app an if statement here so that if the point is 10, it drops the decimal point. So basically that's how that works. Now let's make the chart fit a little nicer in, in the screen. And that is really just using more styling uh, parameters on the chart itself. The first thing and the most easiest basic thing that we can do is add a frame and that will shrink it down. But now you can see we have a scale problem. We're going from zero to 30. We are only ever going to have a maximum of 10 for our weather numbers. So we need to scale our Y axis. That's also pretty simple. All we need to do is add a chart Y scale and then we have a domain from zero to 10. And now you can see our data fits very nicely inside that Y scale. Um, the X scale looks a little weird right now. We're displaying too much information here. So to fix that, we just do X scale uh, domain. And we're basically going from date to date, adding a time interval, which is 12 times 60 times 60. So 12 hours. And then we're changing our our axis marks to just be the date uh, formatted to digital uh, to default digits abbreviated AM PM, which uh, allows them to fit a little bit nicer on the screen. And then we have them counting by two. So every two hours, eight, 10, 12, two, et cetera. Uh, that just fits it better on the screen. Uh, doesn't have the overflow issues that, that we were having previously. So this is basically uh, a chart in Swift UI that is pretty customized and, and it's really just still scratching the surface of what can be done with Swift charts. 
Uh, I hope you liked this video. If you did, click the like button, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.